Hi everyone, it's Kitty Colbert here from the hashtag eds for ire campaign. Um, basically it's the campaign for, to fight for proper healthcare here in Ireland for patients of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and Hypermobility Spectrum Disorder. I hope you follow us on Facebook and Instagram and everywhere else and that you might be aware of us. I just wanted to do a quick video just to um, thank so, Deputy Thomas Bernhin so much. Uh, for all his work recently, um, he showed up at our one of our protests, our first protests outside the doll. We are now doing them monthly. Um, and he was very, you know, concerned and asked us plenty of questions. And he's actually dealt with other EDS and HSD patients before here in Ireland. So that's great to have him on our side. Um, thank you also to other TDs that uh, came to see us and sent us emails and well wishes. And, you know, we appreciate everyone's support. Um, you know, Deputy Burton had put forward a couple of questions for us and I have them here so you know the usual responses um so I just wanted to go through you know those questions um that he had put forward for us and basically there was two questions both of the answers are very similar and if you have EDS um and you live in Ireland you probably are sick of hearing the same responses back from the HSC and um unfortunately these are no different so I'll just run through them really quickly um, so the first question put forward was to ask the Minister for Health if he will seek funding in Budget 2020 to provide resources for the establishment of a dedicated department at the University Hospital here to treat persons with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and Hypermobility Spectrum Disorders to be led by a specialist consultant on the conditions and if he will make a statement on the matter. Um, and then of course the second one was to ask the Minister for Health the steps he is taking to address the needs of persons with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and Hypermobility Spectrum Disorders, his plans to improve services for persons with conditions in 2019 and 2020, and if he will make a statement on the matter. Um, obviously, they're two small questions. There's many, many issues to consider, but I'll run through the answers and then, you know, hopefully uh, I can give some more information on that. And if I, if there's something, questions that you have later, feel free to message me on Facebook um, or through the website or anywhere else at all. Okay, so both of these questions start off relatively the same, the same two couple of paragraphs to start. Um, dear Deputy Brown, the Health Service, Service Executive has been requested to reply directly to you in context of the above parliamentary question, which you submitted to the Minister for Health for response. I've examined the matter and the following outlines the, the position. Okay, so first paragraph. Uh, as it's a rare condition, the diagnosis of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is usually dependent on access to a specialist consultant, such as a paediatric rheumatologist for children and an adult rheumatologist for adults. Yeah, fair enough. We, I mean, we, we know that. Um, so treatment of hypermobility largely consists of education, counselling, physiotherapy, occupational therapy and pain management, including psychology all of which are available through the HSC. Yeah, yeah, um, obviously things are a postcode lottery, services aren't great, and all those things are available through the HSC. Now, I just wanted to kind of discuss that. Um, treatments for EDS and HSD, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, absolutely 100%. Um, I, you know, I don't know if, if you have EDS and you're watching this, you know, you might have a physiotherapist, you might not. That's a complete postcode lottery in, in this country, as with any other service. Um, I can't count the amount of physiotherapists I went through in about a 10-year span to try and find one that knew anything about hypermobility conditions. Um, and, you know, I had physiotherapy as a child before they realised I was hypermobile, which was absolutely ridiculous. They should have noticed that. Um, so I had bad physio. Now, if you have bad physio, you're better off having no physio at all. So you need a qualified, you know, physiotherapist who knows what they're doing and is not going to do you more damage in the long run, um, which may have unfortunately happened to myself and I'm sure has happened to a lot of you out there. Um, I eventually found someone who knows about hypermobility, at least in part, um, and willing to help me. Um but, you know, that's a long struggle. That's not all physiotherapists know about EDS or HSD, unfortunately. So, you know, physiotherapy, definitely. Um, and I would say that to anyone, you know, that's the first thing you want to, you know, try and do if you find out that you have a hypermobility condition. Occupational therapy, 100%. Um, again, finding one that knows about EDS or HSD, um, finding one that's not on maternity leave, you know, the same, same usual crack with the services as with any condition. Um, 
pain management, of course, again, um, you know, good and bad. Um, luckily, I actually have a pain consultant and she knows a bit about EDS and that's great. Of course, the waiting list was four years, but yeah, all, all good, all good. Um, pain management, including psychology. I mean, yeah, if you're in pain 24-7, you might need counselling. Um, what peed me off quite a bit is that they mentioned treatment of hypermobility largely consists of education. I don't know why education was put first. Educating the person on how they dislocate. I mean, no offence, we know more about it than anyone else. It's our bodies. Um, educating doctors? They don't really say. I would completely agree if that was the case. Now, the second thing is counselling. So they mentioned counselling there, physiotherapy, occupational therapy and pain management, including psychology. I'm not really sure if there was a need to put in counselling and then put in psychology. Um, you know, if you have EDS or HSD or if your child does, you're probably sick of hearing, oh, it's all in her head, it's all in his head, it's it's all in your head. Um, usually said to children, usually said to the parents of children, um, you know, you can't really say, well, they have a pain condition and, and I believe them in one instance and then in the other hand say, maybe your child's making it up a bit. It, you know, it, do, it doesn't work like that. Um, they either have EDS or they don't and EDS exists. Maybe not so much here in Ireland, but it certainly does. Um, so we get a little peed off with that. I mean, I anyone that knows me knows that I would advocate for counselling big time. I volunteered as a suicide intervention officer you know, I, you know, it's, it's sociology and psychology have been a huge part of my life. Um, I've, you know, trained as a youth worker. So it's, I'm all about the talking therapy. Don't get me wrong. You know, that's not, that's not the issue here. The issue is putting such an emphasis on it. And I know so many parents out there that are sick of hearing this, you know, um, that the psychological aspect of it is to put blame on the child. And, you know, it's just horrible. It's just ridiculous. And so that really peed me off to see both counselling and psychology mentioned there in the treatment of EDS. Um, I wouldn't put them as the top, you know, of the list. Obviously, physiotherapy and occupational therapy, I think, you know, if they're putting them in priority, listing them priority at all. But there was no need to put counselling and psychology there. And it just felt like a bit of a dig to the community to me, to be honest. So then it goes on, within paediatrics, an additional paediatric consultant rheumatologist and multidisciplinary team has recently been allocated to address the paediatric waiting list. You know, that's absolutely fine. Um, and it goes on then kind of to say other things about waiting lists in both responses. And, you know, to me, I think we're getting mixed up here. The issue isn't waiting lists. We don't mind waiting four years. I don't want to be on a waiting list, though, for four years, go into appointment to be told, uh, what? I don't know what EDS is or just you know I'm no idea what this is or usually the egotistical thing of a consultant no offense if you're a consultant is to just pretend you don't really you know that you know about it but just say that sit, sit, sit like sit, sit quietly there because you don't want to say that you don't know about it and at the same time you don't want to you know say anything stupid so you just sit there quietly like and let me talk and then it's like oh blah 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 and just kind of waffle on and I just feel that that appointment could be used for someone who could actually help so someone else with a different condition who's on the waiting list could actually use that appointment that's no good to me um, and it's not the fault of my GP and it's not the fault of whoever refers me because you know if if you've ever went, if you have EDS or HSD and you've ever went to anyone in the HSD and you've kind of went, who do I go to for EDS? And all rheumatologists are qualified. That's not the case in Ireland whatsoever. So it's not the fault of the patient and it's not the fault of the GP referring. You know, we're on waiting lists for a few years and then we're getting an appointment that's completely useless to us and could be useful to someone else. So, I mean, while we're talking about waiting lists, let's just talk about that. You know, our issue here isn't waiting lists. And they keep they, both answers, they keep bringing it back to that as if, well, they have the same issue as everyone else, so just kind of wait your turn. We don't have the same treatment here. We don't have the same help as other conditions do. And that's our problem. It's not just a waste of our time. It's a waste of the doctor's time, quite frankly. Um, so the National Clinic Programme for Rheumatology produced a model of care for rheumatology service in 2018, which identifies an increase in consultant rheumatologist posts is required to manage the adult waiting list and is currently averaging over two years nationally. Funding for new consultants has been forthcoming whilst we have sufficient trainees who are qualified and ready to take up consultant posts. 
again, all general waiting list stuff that doesn't apply to people with EDS or HSD. Uh, the NCPR it does not agree that Ireland requires a single specialist in EDS as paediatric and allergologists are trained in the diagnosis and management of EDS and is in the position that we should continue to increase access to paediatric and adult rheumatology services for the people of Ireland based on uh, credible triage of the severity of their condition. Well, that's just horseshit. That's just absolute horseshit. And I get angry more and more I read it. And, you know, this has been going on for years. I mean, I'm here I'm on camera right now talking to you about this. Um, there's probably at least 100 people out there who have gotten similar things like this throughout the years. You know, I'm not the first person in Ireland to advocate in any way whatsoever for EDS or for HSD. And it's the same horse shit constantly. Um, <laughs> it's not an issue of waiting lists. Rheumatologists in Ireland aren't trained. They're not confident enough, even ones that do know about EDS and HSD, it's nearly impossible um, to get a diagnosis publicly. You know, um, it's really expensive to go private. And then when we get the private diagnosis from maybe like two consultants in the whole country who will do it, it's, you know, not taken seriously then by, by other doctors, because it's kind of like, well, well, I mean, is that really a thing? You know, if, if rheumatologists won't diagnose it, and like, don't get me wrong, you know, if I was in that field, I'm not blaming a rheumatologist. If I was in that field and I wasn't confident in diagnosing something completely understandable, you know, you need to be aware of the condition and you need to be trained and you need to feel confident before you make an actual diagnosis in any condition. Um, but for the blanket statement of all rheumatologists in Ireland can and will diagnose EDS and HSD, that's just not true at all. Um, so I think really, you know, that's everything from that question. And it's very similar, as I said, with the second question. Um, yes, yeah, so the model of care, blah, blah, blah. So it's, yeah, I mean, it's basically the same. And then some of them were, some of it's word by word the same. And then it's just written differently. Uh, yeah, so we don't require uh, a consultant because all rheumatologists are consultants. Um, we actually on the website we have a story section there's only a few stories there now like but I do want to get more up and going so if you are someone out there that's waiting for diagnosis of either ADS or HSD maybe you went to a physio at some stage like you know that's that's kind of generally what happens you went to physio at some stage and you're like oh you're very hypermobile do you think maybe you have ADS or HSD that kind of thing um you know and then you get like sent into the system for years and years and years and you know, you find support groups online and whatever else. I want to hear from you. I want your story. I want your story on the website. Um, we have the poll on the website as well for people that do have a diagnosis. Now, that's a diagnosis of any kind of hypermobility condition. So even if it's one of the older terms that are used, because I know HSD isn't used a lot in Ireland at all, um, or the new criteria at all. So I want to hear from you. The website is www.edsforire.ie. Um, we have a blog section there if you want to write a blog section, but the story section is just the patient story. Because really, I think if we put it, names and faces to this condition, just to show people that we are real, we exist, and we're not going away. You know, that's that's just not happening, unfortunately. <laughs> so uh, again, thank you to TD Thomas Brighton for all his work. Um, and to all the other TDs that have been in contact with us. We are going to be doing monthly protests outside the door now. We don't have the date for July, but if you follow us on Facebook, uh, we have events on there. So follow us and keep up to date on Facebook. And of course, if you go on the website, you can join the mailing list as well. Um, and for the pro monthly protests, we need our healthy brothers and sisters in the community to come and stand with us. Because you know yourself with EDS and all the comorbid conditions that go along with it, we're not very healthy a lot of the time. So, you know, we can't attend. So we need you to stand beside us and sometimes for us. Um, if you can come to any of the doll protests, that would be absolutely amazing. Uh, thank you, everyone, and I hope to see you soon.